Hey, my name is Javi, and we're looking at the Transformers Legacy Evolution Decepticon Nemesis, also known as Big Mommy Nemesis. That's right, this big hunk of purple plastic is supposed to be a woman, and I am not doing that again. But what I am doing again is telling you about Bespoke Post, the sponsor of this video. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join, and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. Every month you'll be introduced to cool new stuff, ranging from outdoor gear, home and kitchen goods, clothing, barware, even live oysters. And what you get is based on a quiz you fill out, so each box is personalized. Every box has around $70 worth of goods inside, but you'll be paying way less than that. You could even preview your box before it's shipped, get a look at what's inside, so you can decide if you want to keep it, swap it for a different box, or or skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want, which is gonna be a lot, since they're constantly changing their lineup each month. And for the boxes we have here today, generously provided by our sponsor, we have the Trek Kit, Aye. which includes a titanium emergency whistle, which I suppose if you're lost in the woods or something, you could... And you get this beautiful piece of sportswear. Our next box is the Sauce Kit, which as the name suggests, includes a beautiful variety of delicious sounding sauces. You even get powdered sauces. Just add water and they're ready to go. And finally, a jar that you could put your powdered sauces in. Although I'm sure you guys will find a different use for this. And our final box, the Weekender Kit, which includes a lovely bag that you could put all sorts of stuff in, including all the other stuff you get from Bespoke Post. You could even put your weed in this. So to get 20% off your first box, check the link in the description and use my code JobbyTheHong20 at checkout. Or go to BespokePost.com slash JobbyTheHong20. Thank you, Bespoke Post, for helping me keep the lights on. And thanks for giving me something to blow on when I'm talking to women. What do you mean? How was my day? I'm, I'm scared. You know, there's no way of knowing what I'm wearing, if anything at all. <laughs> ah, just the cool ass shirt. So this gigantic stocking stuffer is the Decepticon counterpart of the Ark figure that we took a look at a long time ago. And while that figure was the Autobot flagship, this one is the Decepticon flagship. And in my opinion, a lot cooler looking. But is the figure any good? Well, promo pictures don't give me a good first impression, but I'll suppose we'll find out after I get through this labyrinth of cardboard. Jesus. Ugh. There we go. Well, apparently some assembly is required. Got your packet of cocaine. What? Uh, <laughs> so thankfully these handy dandy Phone out instructions. Give you a little assembly guide. This is gonna plug into here. Close it up. Then we plug in the wings. Oh, this is the closest you're gonna get to me building a model kit. <laughs> these thingies fold up, and there are these little thingies. Ah, oh, there we go. Well, this is pretty much the completed ship, and it's upside down. There you go. Wow, it looks great. And there's even these little hidden doors here that reveal what looks to be a launch pad, and you can store these little seekers on it, which is really cool. But forget about me cutting out model kit pieces ever again. And finally, we can attach this little command tower here. What a cool looking ship, but kind of limited in how you want to display it, unless you had some sort of stand. Or you can take the bottom fin, split it, get my part separator, yeah. and those are under hinge joints that fold out that still looks really nice and makes her a lot easier to display now she's all put together and if you hadn't put it together yet the painting and the sculpting on this thing is awesome look size isn't everything but a big part of the appeal of this thing is how big it is man i would have loved to have this as a kid and the sculpting is nothing to scoff at either so many panel lines and various mechanical details here hasbro really took advantage of all the plastic real estate they had here there's also what appears to be windows which are completely unpainted probably the biggest downside to this mode is so many areas of unpainted plastic which in a lot of cases is a great thing lack of paint means there's less paint to chip encouraging playability how 
However, there's a lot of precise sculpting here that could have benefited from painted emphasis. That's not gonna bother everybody. I mean, this thing serves its purpose as being a big dumb toy, but I'm sure some of the more creatively inclined people in the audience have already painted this themselves. Send pics, please. Hashtag Javi Failbox. But what little paint there is on this thing is really well done. Love how the Decepticon logo looks. Not a sticker. It's fully painted and sculpted. I also really like how the front of the ship came out. Those little bits of red really do pop. Love the hint of clear plastic on the command tower as well. And I suppose due to the nature of the transformation, there is zero kibble on this thing. No awkward robot head poking out. No fist in its ass. Just an extremely cohesive and complete ship mode. Pretty hefty too, as you can imagine. No diecast metal, but a ton of plastic. God, I pray for these oceans. As for accessories, you've already seen this runner. Other than that, not much, which is fine, but compared to the arc, would have been neat if there was some thruster effect parts, but I suppose you could use the arc's effect parts here. Yeah, yeah. There's also a little ramp here, folds right out, and now you get easy access to her ass. And for something that's a big dumb toy, where's the electronics, man? <laughs> I feel like I say this every time I bring it up, but electronics aren't necessary for a big dumb toy. But me like lights and sounds, okay? Just like a light up cockpit or some blasting sound effects. I'm just thinking about the kids, man. None of that way. I'm just saying, if I was a kid, I would have loved some whooshy whooshy sounds. I should also say that this thing feels really nice to hold. And yeah, nothing comes apart. Super solid ship. Articulation wise, it's a ship. I don't know what you expect. But you do get hinge joints here, that transforming back fin that you saw earlier, and no swivels. That is, if you neglected to attach these parts. Uh, for the swivel! Uh, uh. It should come as no surprise to you that God. Damn, that's a huge bit. Size comparison time. Here's Figma Madoka Kaname, Haya Toys Godzilla, Magic Square Light of Peace, and of course, the Transformers Kingdom Autobot Arc. Oh, they look so good together. This is a fantastic Transformers display. If you had the room. Now, don't get me wrong. I love me my big toys. But when all you got is a display cabinet that you stole from a museum, one wonders where you're gonna put this. So without further ado, let's fold out the construction paper and crack her open. And thanks for cracking me open. What? Through my Patreon and YouTube memberships. Thanks for supporting me even through my dry season. Glad to be back. And for you Double Kiss patrons and Deluxe Class members, here's all your names during the transformation. Thanks for, uh, funding my crack addiction. Really well hidden, but there is a seam here. Just split that open. Oh, crack it like an egg. There we go. There we go. And the command tower folds down. Yeah, boy. Yeah, she got a big ass head. Command tower folds back up. It goes in her back like that and plugs in. Should plug in. There you go. Perfect. Twist her waist around. Bend that down. Twists. Slot in right into her back. Oh, hey. Split her pedals. <laughs> and this is obviously gonna be her legs. There we go. Big ass. Oh, stinky feet. Oh. Same thing here. Oh. 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 Oh boy. Okay, she big. She big, big. Holy crap. Twist the legs around. Yeah. Supposed to close that up. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. The thighs. Fold that inward. Turn it around again. Boom, 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 boom. You're telling me this. Oh shit, it does. Okay, there we go. Ugh. Shouldn't be afraid to use a little bit of force. This is meant to be handled by five-year-olds, after all. Uh, that just plugs in. Oh, so beauty. <clears throat> Gotta plug in her titties here. Ooh. There we go. Her hand, close that up, unfold her fingies. Love the shade of purple, by the way. It's twilight sparkle purple. What a great pleasure it is to open your breeds. Ah! And her face. Right, so the shoulders do snap in a little further down. There you go. And that should allow the head to sit ah, more flush to the chest. And here we have Big Mommy Nemesis. She's all right. Listen, the size is extremely impressive, and she even looks better in person than in the promo pictures. But there are some aspects to this robot mode design that leave a little bit more to be desired. Say for instance, 
<laughs> this serves no aesthetic purpose and feels more like a design shortcut when engineering the transformation. I mean, technically you could remove these flaps to make them look a little less conspicuous, but come on. Parts forming, really? At this price point, remember when Voyager class was $20? I don't. And while the front of the figure looks fine enough, the back of the figure, while not a cause for a lame pun, is a little clunky for my taste. I think I had the same criticism for the arc, where this is a transformation that doesn't quite take advantage of all the plastic real estate that they had. Because the figure is so big, you'd think that they'd be able to engineer a slightly more complex transformation. And by complex, I don't mean <laughs> just an extra hinge joint here or there, an extra panel. I could live with this back kibble, but I don't see an excuse for these arm flaps. But besides that, what about the overall design itself? Sure, it could have looked more sleek and there could have been a more clever use of the ship mode parts, but I kind of dig the lanky and somewhat clunky design of this robot. She looks like a destructive beast. I'm even getting a little Evangelion vibes here, but I'm also a cultist who thinks everything's an Ava reference. Love the color scheme here as well. Those bits of red are nice. Head sculpt is fantastic, and I really like how her eyes literally open up for the transformation. But again, wouldn't it have been cool if there was some light up features here? Uh. Don't be fooled by how thin she looks. This is a chunky toy. Feels super solid. Everything stays in place, but all the wing stuff on her legs doesn't plug in quite as tightly as I would like, which I guess makes sense for the front of her legs specifically, because of these parts plugged in too tightly, it would make this feature a little hard to pull off. And I do literally mean pull off. Ah! Flip out this handle and flip out this barrel. And this is supposed to be a gun. Fits into her hand decently and eh, not the worst looking weapons, but not very threatening. But if you want to talk about non-threatening weapons, oink. this here is supposed to be an axe, I assume. Also plugs right into her hand. What? <laughs> Absolutely pathetic. I just love how the box hypes it up too, as if it's some big deal. Evil fusion! And then they're just these little French surrender flags. <laughs> yeah, these guns are awesome in comparison. I don't know, I just think that this design looks powerful on her own, that these weapons are just superfluous. A robot this big doesn't really need a tiny little axe to fight. Also, that secret storage feature still works in this mode. There's a little volume knob on her arm there, which you can just slide. And there you go. In terms of playability, I wish there was even more features here. Maybe some compartments to put mini cons in. Ah, those were the days. And again, maybe an electronic feature. Huh? But if we're on the topic of playability, you can't have much playability without some pose ability. Ball joint at the head. And while every ball joint can be a swivel, there's a dedicated swivel at the base of her neck. Oh, it's actually not a ball joint. Could have fooled me. Can look up really far and look down, not much. Technically, she's got up and down at these joints here but you'd rather have them locked down into place so that the head doesn't float around. You get a rope at the shoulder, but the wings can get out of the way, so you do get that 360 rotation. And her backpack can kind of, and her backpack could kind of move for what that's worth. R moves out. There's a ratchet joint at her bicep, which doesn't make much sense anatomically, but doesn't look bad at all. Bicep swivel, double bend at the elbow, wrist swivel, hinge joint here, and a hinge joint here. No individually articulated fingers, and really no excuse. Waist swivel? Man, this makes it feel like I'm doing actual work. Bro Rotation at the leg, can't move back that far. Beautiful spread! Ah! When that spread too good, god damn. Do not handle toys like me or else this will happen. However, if I may cope, not really missing much with this piece gone. That just means there's more shoulder articulation without the head floating out of place. Amazing, I'm a genius! Anyway, the spread is insane. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Thigh swivel, bend at the knee, ankle swivel, and kind of a pathetic pivot. Well, at least it's there at all. Posability's not bad at all, if a bit limited. But fortunately, it doesn't take a complicated pose to make this thing look really cool. I'm sure the majority of people who get this, links in the description, by the way, are gonna have her displayed in a semi-neutral standing pose to showcase her size comparison. My god. Here's Madoka, Godzilla, Prime, and the Ark. This this pairing has big step on me energy. So I quite like this thing, but I don't love it. Ah. Highly recommend this for kids. I'm sure they'll love it. It's just kind of hard to recommend because of the, uh, just get your kids a vape or something.
my name is Jobby, and there's two things you don't know about Earth. 